Last week, I made a tutorial on PCB home fabrication. And yeah, I got tons of requests on how I made my PCB shaker that I use for etching. We all know the pain when it comes to the etching process. You just sit for half an hour shaking a vat of etchant to get a faster and even PCB output. Say no more to those dull and boring moments because this week, we are going to make a do-it-yourself PCB shaker. A low-cost solution that you can make yourself using readily available materials. And not to mention, this device has its its own speed control. Let's start with the things that you will need. You'll need a DC to DC converter for controlling the motor speed, a switch and a DC jack, two scrap pieces of wood or acrylic, a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, a gear motor, some screws, and a hinge. For the project's enclosure, I'm using two plastic container trays. Let's start by making the rocking mechanism. Grab a tiny piece of acrylic or wood with a height of 20 millimeters and use a pencil for making the holes before drilling. This is for making a T-shaped bracket that goes with a hinge for connecting both top and lower trays. Drop some super glue on the surface of the larger acrylic and use your ruler as a guide for mounting the smaller piece perpendicular to it. And now you have a T-shaped bracket with a tiny offset. I tried to avoid drilling holes through the upper tray to prevent the etchant from leaking and dissolving the screws, so I ended up using super glue instead. Next, grab the lower tray and align the hinge at the very center. You can use the hinge as a stencil for drilling holes. Once done, add some bolts and secure the other end by adding nuts. Then add two more bolts to this side of the hinge. You can now join both top and bottom trays through these two bolts. Be sure to secure them in place as much as possible to prevent them from wiggling. And now you have a simple rocking mechanism. Now we have to mount the gear motor to the side of the lower tray. I drilled two holes for the motor's M3 screw mount and a larger hole at the center for the motor's shaft. Perfect! Now we can screw the gear motor in place. Take note you'll need two M3 screws for this. Super glue the DC jack, snap on the switch, and the potentiometer. Use the provided washer and nut to properly mount the potentiometer. You can choose to add the plastic knob to make your project look a lot better. Let's now work on the regulator. I decided to remove the trimmer resistor so I can replace it with a pot that can be tuned by hand. Instead of using screws, I just super glued the caps of the regulator to the wall of the lower tray. Here's a simple wiring diagram of the component. I'm using an adjustable buck converter instead of a PWM controller since it's the only available module I have at hand. The wiring for the speed controller is pretty simple. Grab an old jar and we'll be needing its plastic cover as a flywheel for transferring the rotational motion of the motor to the tray. Drill a hole around 10 millimeters from the center. Grab a popsicle stick and drill a hole on one of its ends. Grab a bolt, add a washer, Add the popsicle stick and screw the nut halfway from the bolt. Attach your flywheel then secure the other end with another nut. If you don't have a thread locker at the moment, super glue works just fine. Your popsicle stick should move freely with minimal friction. If you want to stay away from 3D printed D-shaft mounts, you can use clay epoxy for mounting the flywheel to your gear motor shaft. Just make sure that the flywheel is aligned to the shaft. Now drill a hole on the upper tray. Grab a bolt, then add a washer. Push the bolt through the upper tray, then add another washer. Now secure the bolt and the washers with a nut. Next, drill a hole on the other end of the popsicle stick, then connect the popsicle stick to the upper tray. Grab a 12 volt power brick rated at least at 1 amp. Then connect the power brick to the DC jack. Turn on the machine to see if the upper tray is perfectly balanced. If not, you can do an experiment by drilling several holes on the popsicle stick for moving the lever distance. When you're satisfied with the balancing, you can use a wire cutter for cutting the excess piece from the stick. Once done, you can now put it back in place. You can add a washer and a nut to prevent the popsicle from getting detached. And that's how you make a low-cost PCB shaker. Grab your developed PCB, pour your etchant on the upper tray, and let it do the magic. Just don't turn the speed all the way up, otherwise you'll probably spill ferry chloride all over the place. If you want to learn how to make your own tools and printed circuit boards, feel free to check out my recent videos. Don't forget to press the like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.